Hey there, welcome to the Electronics channel. I want to show you how to use a BJT to make a really simple constant current driver. So just to refresh your memory about a constant current source or constant current driver, if we have a load of some kind and we want to make sure that the current through the load is constant, then you'd want to put connect a constant current source to it instead of a constant voltage source like we normally do when we're, when we're looking at that circuits. So if we have a load here and we want that constant current connected to it, we would connect a constant current source, or in this case, I guess I could call it a current sink. Uh, the current source would be if the current was driving, if the source was driving current into the load. So in this case, we have the current sink, it's pulling current through the load. And in this case, we have a current source that's driving current through the load. So I want to show you how to use a BJT circuit. Actually, this is the circuit. I'm going to describe how this particular circuit works and then show you a modification to actually improve this circuit a little bit without adding much complexity. Okay, to start with, let's look at a little bit more of a concrete example where I've got my load is an LED. And I want to make sure that regardless of which LED I put in here, I will have a constant current going through that LED. I've taken out the part of the base that's going to set up the base current to simplify the what we're looking at to start with. So on the collector emitter part of the BJT here, we can make this approximation that the current through the load is going to be approximately equal to the current in the emitter. It's not going to be exactly the same. It's going to be some base current that gets added, but we're going to assume that our beta is big enough, let's say at least 100, that the amount of current added by the base is, is like 1% of that overall current. And we know that the emitter current is going to be whatever the voltage is at the emitter divided by whatever the emitter resistance is. So if you can set VE and RE to be particular values, or if you can choose those values, then you can design your circuit for a particular emitter current. And the simplest way to set the voltage at the emitter is to set the voltage at the base with a voltage divider circuit like this. We need to ensure that RB2 is less than or equal to beta RE over 0.1. And the reason we wanna do that is so that we can assume that this is a good enough voltage divider between RB1 and RB2 so that the current going through RB1 is also going through RB2. The base current is minimized by making sure this resistance is big enough. So that's an, that's an easy enough thing to do. And, and let's do an, a design example to, to figure out what resistor values you need, we need for a particular situation. So let's say that the current through the load, the LED in this case, we need that current to be around 20 milliamps in order for that LED to turn on. And let's say that we've got a VCC of five volts simple low, vol low voltage system. So what we can do is we'll set the VE to be equal to two volts. We want VE to be two volts. And that means that the RE value that we need is going to be that two volts divided by the current that we want through the load. It's 20 milliamps, 0 0.02 amps. And that means that the RE value that we need is 100 ohms. In order to get the VE of 2 volts, we need to make sure that the VB is 2.7 volts. That's because we have a 0.7 volt drop across this base emitter junction. So to get VE of 2 volts, we need VB of 2.7 volts. To get the VB of 2.7 volts, we need to make sure that the voltage across RB2 divided by the voltage across RB1 is equal to the ratio of the voltage RB2, which we need to be at 2.7 volts, divided by VRB1, which is going to be five minus 2.7 volts. So the ratio of VRB2 to VRB1 is 1.17. So that's the ratio of the voltages. That's also gonna be the ratio of the resistances. RB2 over RB1 is equal to 1.17. If I rewrite this just in terms of RB1, I can say RB1 is equal to 0.85 RB2. And I want to make sure that this is true. I've got a beta of 100. I've chosen my RE to be 100. 100 times 100 is 10,000 divided by... I've just realized that's not divided by 0.1, that's multiplied by 0.1. And in this particular case, that's going to be equal to 1,000. So I'm going to choose my RB2 of, of 1,000. 
So if my RB2 is 1,000 ohms, then according to this equation, my RB1 needs to be 850 ohms. I've also got figured out what my RE is, it's 100 ohms. So if I build this circuit, I am going to get approximately 20 milliamps through this LED. So that's not quite the end of the story. Let's look at what the limitations are. Okay, so the obvious limitation there, one of the obvious limitations is if this Volt, the voltage across this LED, if that needs to be more than five volts, obviously this is not going to work. So there's going to be some kind of limitation on how much voltage we can have across this LED for this system to work. And one thing we need to keep in mind is that we are required that this transistor is maintained in the active region. Obviously, if we go into cutoff, there'll be no current. And if we go into saturation, then we are going to be limiting the amount of current that we can have through the load. So let's look at it at a couple of cases. Let's build up a table here first of all. So we've got a VDD, a V load, a voltage at the emitter, and a voltage between collector and emitter. And we're going to look at this one. We're going to focus on what happens with this one as the load changes because that's going to tell us whether we are in or tell, tell us which operating region of the transistor we're in. So in all these cases, VDD is 5 volts. Now let's say we're using a, an LED that has a forward voltage of 1.7 volts. We've designed for a VE of 2 volts. That means what's left over for VCE is 1.3 volts. That confirms that we are operating in the active region. What if we change the LED so that it's a 2.1 volt LED? VE, we still want it to be 2 volts to maintain the 20 milliamps through that LED. In this case, our VCE is going to be 0.9 volts. We're still OK. We still have enough voltage across the collector emitter. Third case, what if we change this to a blue LED that has a forward voltage of 3.3 volts? We still want VE to be 2 volts in order, for, in order to get the 100 milliamps, but 2 plus 3.3 gives me 5.3, which is more than VDD, which means my VCE would have to be negative 0.3 volts, which of course is not possible. We can't have a negative voltage across that collector emitter. So, we are pushing into saturation, which means we are going to be limiting the current that we have through here, so we don't actually we we would not actually have the 20 milliamps through the load, so it would stop functioning as the constant current source. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when you're do, when you're designing one of these is, is is look at the range of voltages that you could have for your load to make sure that you are maintaining operation within the active region for the transistor. Now I said we could make a slightly better circuit than this one for the constant current source or constant current sink in this case. And we can do that by instead by not using the voltage divider over here to set the voltage at the base, but instead using some other method to set the voltage at the base. And the way that we can make this slightly better current sink is using diodes to bias the base. So this I've got an array of four diodes in a row here, but alternatively, I, if I knew the voltage I want, I could put a, the appropriate Zener diode in here instead. In this particular example, let's say we're designing the exact same circuit as before, so we want this to be 20 milliamps. And we are using these four diodes. We're using, let's say, 1N4148s or something similar. That's a silicon diode with a 0.7 volt drop across it. So in this particular case, we're going to try to make sure that we're setting, with those four diodes, we're setting the voltage at the base to about 2.8 volts. We're assuming 0.7 volts per diode. If VB is 2.8 volts, then VE is going to be 2.1 volts, 0.7 volts less. We still want the IE to be about 20 milliamps. So we are going to choose RE to be 2.1 volts divided by 0 0.02 amps, which works out to 105 ohms. I'm assuming that my base current is low enough that I can ignore it for the RE, and if I, but if I did include it, I'd find that I'd be pretty close to 105 ohms anyway. If, I, if I'm assuming the voltage across the diode is about 0.7 volts, well, I actually, I, I, can, I can design it pretty well to make sure that that's about 0.7 volts. If I look on the data sheet for the particular diode I chose, I can find out what current through here would make my diode voltage 0.7 volts. And it turns out, if I have my current through my diode for the 1N4148 to be about 5 milliamps, then the forward voltage on the diode is going to be 0.7 volts or pretty close to 0.7 volts. And of course, that varies by temperature from diode to diode, but uh, I can get pretty close here. And this information allows me to figure out what RB value to use. So RB is going to be 
well, we want about 5 milliamps through RB, and we are going to have 5 minus 2.8 volts across it. So if we go voltage over the current that we want, that gives me 440 ohms for RB. Okay, so that's about it for these really simple constant current drivers using a single BJT. Uh, you can make better constant current drivers using multiple BJTs. You can see my video on current mirrors for that. So I hope you learned a little bit. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.